Hello, it's Jimmy here at i have here a Nissan Qashqai. It's been booked in for some glow plugs, but we're gonna get our diagnostic machine here loaded up. We'll do a scan of the vehicle just to make sure that glow plugs is what it needs, and then we'll go from there. Okay, this is the launch Euro Tab 3. Just switched it on, so it's gonna be a little bit slow for a minute. Okay, we're gonna hit diagnose. And we're ready for a scan. Uh, we'll do a high speed one. I can't find that transmission control unit, I don't think, because it's not got an automatic gearbox. Right, one phone code. P0380-96 Yeah, so it looks right So the reason I checked is because obviously it was just booked in for glow plugs But now that the customer has dropped it off, he's just gave me a little bit of a story saying he went to Halfords The light was on, they switched it off uh, The light came back on, so he went back They plugged it in again and said yeah, it looks like it might need glow plugs But change the glow plugs and then go from there, see what else it needs Which was a bit, mm, what? Uh, just did make me, make me sort of doubt it a little bit there because he said they said try the glow plugs first and then go from there um, yeah so I was thinking maybe there might be other fault codes on there and they're just saying yeah clear to get the glow plugs sorted first and then maybe go through the other faults but it looks like it's a straightforward glow plug error code I've done loads of these with that fault code okay so when I'm doing these I'll just try, I'll try to leave the engine running as long as possible until there is parts that I need to switch the engine off for but we'll leave it on for the minute, just keep the engine warm while I'm disconnecting some bits. Okay, now I do need to disconnect this, so we're going to have to turn the engine off. This pipe, I think these cars will stall out once you've disconnected that, so we'll get the engine off now. So I'm just using this little clip here, removal tool, and then we hook that up. Uh, try to pull it up at, and out at the same time, so all the way up a little bit. And then we should be able to just disconnect it like that. 10 mil bolt over here. Okay, I'm gonna use an electric ratchet for that, just because it's quick and easy. Now we've got that up, we just basically tuck it over there. There's a few clips around the engine cover. Just like that. I'm not sure how many of those there are, two I think. A um, couple of 10 mil bolts again around the back. Uh, that one's on an angle, so I need to get a smaller ratchet in there. It's quite difficult to get to that even with my quarter inch ratchet there, so it's getting wedged in there. Just trying to see if I can maybe loosen off these bolts and just notice something actually. Hang on a minute, let me turn the torch on. A bit of a crack design there, isn't it? some point in the future that's going to rub its way into the wiring loom okay so I'm just using a ratchet head instead we've loosened it up should be able to just undo the rest by fingers now gave up on the idea of that because it's got two bolts there another two down the back and yeah it's just just trying to make things more complicated for myself just use a different ratchet and then well unscrew this Bit of a long bolt. Okay, disconnect the wire and harness there. Now this should lift up. See how I said it should. It's getting caught on stuff. It should lift up, but there always there's always a, a fight. Okay, we can see the glow plugs now. We got one, two, three, four. So I always like to use a set of these 90 degree sort of pliers. Just easy to grab them. Just pull the power plugs off, power supplies, whatever you call them. All right, another one over here.
Okay, now we've got the plugs off. We can see just in between the gaps in there, we've got the tip of each glow plug. Okay, just using a 10 inch ratchet. See, I've got a little O ring around there. It just keeps, keeps the swivel sort of stiff so I can control it and get it down there. I do have a proper glow plug removal set somewhere in the van, but I can't seem to find it. And we've just had our little delivery there from Bennett's of glow plugs. So we get those fitted in once we've got these old ones out. So we've got number one out, now we're on to number two. Angle on this one, it's just a little bit a little bit to the side because of this fuel holes here, fuel line, sorry. Not holes. Right, let's try and get this out. Okay, so I've just had to pull the socket out with the pliers here and then just pull the glow plug out. Just like that. Okay, so we've got our four glow plugs out. We've got four new replacements over here. Wait. You, I mean, some people would, can grease these up. I don't like greasing, I don't like getting grease on the thread. Um, depending on the condition of the old ones that come out. So if you had a lot of corrosion around here, a lot of lumps and stuff, um, you could sort of clean out the, the port where they come from. I'm happy enough to just put some some new glow plugs in this car really they don't never really seize in on these engines um and yeah so we're just gonna we're just gonna put it straight in without any sort of grease i don't you could put grease maybe around this section it's a very short glow plug so there's not much room to do that on the vivaros you know you've got a glow plug about twice as long as this so you've got a long port on it that you can grease up um next part is trying to get these in without dropping them now again, like I said, on my proper set, I've got a size 10 of these, the glow plug ones, that are designed for it. It's got a magnet on it, but this one doesn't, so just got to be careful as I'm sort of putting them in, that they don't fall out. So that's number one in. We're on to number two again. You see the angle, you've got to sort of get through the through the fuel lines to get in there. Sort of the same on number three and number four. Use a quarter inch ratchet. Snip these down. I mean, most glow plugs is just a sort of a little nip, sort of six to nine newton meters, depending on the engine. But I right, need to get that out. Okay, so pretty self-explanatory, really. You just put all of the connectors back on once the glow plugs are fitted in place. This pipe now can go back over here, and then just push the clip back in. We'll just make sure that it's in, so give it a pull, make sure it's locked in place. That needs to sit over there. And then we put our little... Just, uh, tighten that back down. I did remove the one from here as well, but I gave up on that idea. Put that back on. Actually, I've done this wrong. <laughs> I've done this wrong, yeah. We need to get this pipe back off. I haven't put the engine cover back in, which is this one. Okay, we're just nipping back on the 10mm bolts on the top here. Okay, so we haven't done the diagnostics part of the glow plugs. Obviously, this this wasn't in for a diagnostic check. It just he just wanted glow plugs replaced. Um, he said, you know, regardless, he wanted them changed anyway uh, because they haven't been changed since he's owned the car. So. We have, that's number one. We've got these in the correct order. That is number two, dead. Number three, dead. Number four, dead. So we've only got one working glow plug there. And like I said, it wasn't in for diagnostics. Uh, we've just done the code scan as well, just for the video purposes. But we, we obviously we're gonna do a code scan and clear the fault codes anyway that is not diagnostics code reading and clearing the fault code is not diagnostics it's not a diagnostic assessment not a diagnostic scan i mean uh, well it is a diagnostic scan but it's not not what you'd call diagnostic tests i get that all the time when i'm doing dpf stuff people say oh how much is it to clean my dpf yeah but why is it blocked uh well you know it's, it just needs cleaning yeah but why does it need cleaning um i'll have to do my diagnostic assessment before i do the clean that's just part of my policy um, and then they say well no I've already got the diagnostic I've sent you a screenshot of the diagnostic um, but my mechanic uh, is just is not happy to do it he doesn't know 
how to fix it, basically. And I said, well, the reason the reason your mechanic doesn't want to fix it is because he's not sure if it's going to work and most of the time it's not because there is always something else behind it I mean there are some rare cases I'd say one in 50 one in maybe a hundred that I've seen um, where customers have come to me and the DPF is just blocked out of out of how they've been driving the car um, but that is very very rare you need to do sort of two 200 to 500 miles depending on the car depending on the, on a lot of stuff but two to 500 miles of journeys less than sort of one mile or less than a couple of minutes driving if you're doing that every day and you've accumulated sort of 300 miles and you've never driven the car more than 20 minutes yeah possibly or you, you're the type of person who motorhome uses for instance they leave the cars idling or leave the camper idling um, when they started up in the morning you know they'd leave it idling for half an hour and they've been parked in a um, whatever you call those places holiday park home whatever you call it and they're parked there for say a week or two and they just get up every day and start the engine let it run for half an hour and then switch it back off again the vehicle hasn't moved idling for a long time is very bad for a diesel um, yeah so all that sort of stuff But it's unrelated to this video but we're just having a little chat about it yeah, so also with this one is obviously, I don't, it's not mandatory for me to do a diagnostic test if someone wants glow plugs fitting. If they just want glow plugs fitting, you can have glow plugs fitting, of course. I'm not I'm not saying it's going to fix whatever other issues you've got in your car, but if you want glow plugs fitting, there's your price on that. But with DPFs, I'm not going to clean your DPF without doing a diagnostic assessment because 9.9 .9 times out of 10, if I do that, you'll be back tomorrow complaining that I haven't cleaned it properly because the lights come back on okay so we've determined that three out of four of these glow plugs are not working so now we're just going to clear the fault codes and then we can start the engine up okay so that is it we're just going to pack up our tools and i'll see you on the next video